Mike, you can go ahead if you're ready. Hi, Corey. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Rayo, and I'm the Brock Badgers women's basketball coach. My topic today is to highlight some of the challenges we face this year and to point out the successes in overcoming those challenges. Uh, during these difficult times, I hope discussions like these will bring our basketball community a little closer together. So hopefully with that, for us, this was uh, our team two years ago and our year started uh, right in April. So um, after we decided, who, after we knew who was coming back, we figured out we had nine returning players. So, sorry. So um, our year started in April. Anyway, with our returning players, our first priority was determined to get in shape. Uh, I have regular meetings with the sports performance group, uh, one person in particular, Taylor T. Thiessen, and I have a lot of input into what, um, and uh, we monitor what the girls do on a weekly basis. Um, for you developmental coaches and, and high school coaches, uh, I did this the same thing, but I did it myself, and, and it was not as um, sophisticated as, in, as it is in university, but I just had a plyometrics pro program that I got from Queen's University, and we implemented that in the off season. And we just used the fundamental weight training program from that we used uh, on our universal because that's all we had at the school. And uh, we just had nine stations, and we rotated, and uh, we did that three times a week, start starting in April. We also did some car car cardio, like all of you. We have open gyms. Our cardio was basically in the off season was the kids playing. They went up and down. And really when I was in high school, we only had one rule. They would play and I wouldn't say anything. I didn't coach. I just kind of watched and they went through, through the motions. They, they went up and down, but getting back to Brock, um, what we do is, uh, is very simple. We start in April and we have, you know, we just, we're trying to get game, game ready. And for us start starting in April, uh, we work with the BSBC, and then we have individuals. So our individual sessions are a breakdown of, of individual skills for each player. And everyone is different. And we work on different things with everyone. But together, we have a common thread. We all do dribbling. We all do what we call rim touches. And we all do a, a facet of shooting. In our dribbling, I just use the Pete Maravich drills, and I, I like some Steve Nash two-ball drills. And we, we do that beginning of every individual, beginning and end. Rim touches for us is all kind of stuff inside the paint, some Euro steps, some flips, some all those kind kinds of things, right and left-handed um, stuff on both sides of the rim just to get the kids the feel of the basket. Uh, shooting, I teach a lot of shooting. So... Uh, what we do is we break down players and we start with the hands, the feet, and everything's in from close range and we just go from there. So that's kind of our off season to, to begin with, to start out with. Uh, we do always have small group sessions during April, May, and June, um, and even into the summer. Uh, we usually get between four and six players or whoever's returning. And we do work on two levels. We work with them individually. So the first thing that we do individually, we work a lot of defensive stuff. So I like to work on lateral movement and like shuffles and zigzags and all that kind of stuff, defensive footwork. Why is that important? Important for us because I think the next two items like closeouts are very, very important in our game. And if we don't repeat and get better and get better with closeouts, then I don't think we're that effective. And for me, closeouts are two things. I learned this uh, when I was assisting with Charles Kissy, and he brought a, some of the Raptor stuff in with me, uh, to me. Um, and we do kind of the same thing. We like, I, DWL means defending with length. And that's all. Like, we like to defend with length because we don't want anybody going by us. But we still want you to bother the offensive player. Stick hand for us is huge, 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 huge. 
So stick hand for us. We need to get it up. Why? Because we want to disrupt spot shooters. We want the, we want them to put it on the ground. And yeah, we're trying to funnel them, but we want them to put it on the ground. So for us, those three things are important. After getting that, that and we have a series of compete drills, which again, I learned from Charles a lot. We compete them right from the beginning, right from the beginning. We teach them individual things and then we compete them. So we start out just going one-on-one -on -one from the swing spot, sometimes the base, the baseline too. And we kind of have a, a 0.5 rule. So you get the ball. So we'll have a coach at the swing spot and the player at the other swing spot. So we'll make them get open. We give them the ball and then they got 0.5 seconds to decide what they're going to do. And they only really have two options, take it to the basket or shoot it, you know, and then we play to the end. And we always have winners and losers, first one to five, and the losers do something small. It might be a suicide. It might be a half court thing. It might be push-ups, but we always have winners and losers. So we like to compete them at that end. We progress with that. Uh, I like the advantage, disadvantage kind of thing. I always like to put the defense at a disadvantage. So uh, we'll go two on one and we'll work on closeouts again and um, and helping as well. So uh, coach will get at the swing spot. And we'll, you know, we'll get it to the other player at the swing spot. So the defensive player has to kind of close out, get a stick hand up, defend with length, force him to put it down. And then we'll put our second player at the post. So it's just, it works both ends. So they're looking at, at getting the ball inside of the post. But then after the pass is made, we want our defensive player to bust down and see if they can help and stop the post play. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the other side, the other end of it, you can go, you can keep them on the perimeter as well. You can put them on this, on a swing spot and the baseline spot or the swing spot and the swing spot. I like the swing spot and the swing spot with uh, versus a two on one only because it's a little farther to uh, to uh, defend and that's more realistic for us. Um, those are the spots we, we usually have to help on swing spot to swing spot. So we do that a two on one and then you play. Um, and then from there we progress. We just go into the next big thing for us is is ball is ball ball screens. We have to learn to defend ball ball screens. It seems like everybody and his brother and mother and sister are using ball screens in their offense. So we have to defend it. If you don't learn to defend it, then I don't I don't think you're going to do well uh, in our league anyway. So um, we 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 go two on two and we get our bigs and our smalls or whatever. Sometimes we, you know, sometimes it's just four or six people, whoever we have, and they'll set a screen going into the middle and then going into the baseline. And defensively, we work hard at going over the top of the screen. We want our guys to go over the top, top of the screen, what I call blowing it up. We like to try and blow up the screen. Chris and Gallant's probably our best athlete that does it, but we try and get everybody to do it. Um, yeah, I understand that sometimes we do go under screens and that's all scouting, but we try and work hard to get over top, top of the screens. And then our big, we don't really hedge. We don't, what we call, we call it blue. You know, we want to, our idea is to stop, stop the ball screen with only two people. We don't really want a lot of help from other people because then we have to rotate and switch and it gets all confused. So if we can defend the ball screen with the two people, the two 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 defenders, to us, I think we got an advantage. So that's what we work on every day, stopping the ball screen with just those two people. That means you have to give up some something at times. And and you know, analytics will tell you if you give up the, you know, the mid-range shot, you know, off off the dribble, you're better off. I, I'm not sold on that 100%, but they say that you do do that, and and we follow that that rule as well. So we do do that, um, and then we get into a three on three session every uh, every day too, and it's in small spaces. So we'll work the triangle on one side side of the floor, um, and we use ball screens. But I also work on a lot of off ball screens. I like off ball movement, uh, player movement, ball 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 movement. And for us, play player movement a lot of times is what are we doing off the ball, and so. Um, there's so many ways, so many different ways that you can screen in that small triangle, you know, small spaces type thing. So we work on that a lot too. 
So that's our progression with that. We don't go beyond that, other than to say, um, if I have a big in the, if I have a big in the crowd, what we do all the time is we go two on one against them full court all the time. Sometimes half because we only got six players, but we'll go two on one. We want them to see two on ones every day, all the time in the off season, uh, because I like to think that sometime we're going to pick up. <laughs> It didn't work the last two, two, two years, but we get ready for it. And I, and if we give up something, it's going to be the two on one against our big. So I like for our big to see that all the time. Um, in that, whenever we have a session, whenever we get together, there's constants. We always dribble and two man shooting for us all the time. Two man shooting. Also, some something that we picked up and we do it every day. We call it monkey in the middle, and it's just closeouts three three men uh, in a line, three girls in a, in a line, and the ball goes back and forth, and they close out, stick, can, defend with flank. We add a dribble, and they pass pass to the other people. So those are the three constants that we use all the time. Team chemistry. Team chemistry, uh, the first part, part of it for us is rules. It's a difficult and slow process for us. There are challenges for sure. And those challenges, <laughs> they have to be dealt with. And for us, uh, you know, any type of behavioral things for us is kind of something that you have to look at. But the way I look at it is uh, things happen and you have to deal with, deal with them. But when things happen to us like this year and the past year, it kind of galvanizes a group. It, you know, when something does, when somebody does something wrong and you have to discipline them, the other group, the other girls, for some reason, just step up. And then you have a, a bigger pool of players. I think um, we have very few. Uh, actually, we only have a couple. But so when they break them, they know. And uh, like this year, I was very, I was pleasantly surprised when other players had to step in and fill the roles of players that were not going to play that day, you know, or, you know, for that. And for, in our case, several games. So for us, it was, it was, uh, it's something that we, they know that we're serious and they know they got to abide by certain rules and, and it, it just makes everything smooth, smooth going for everyone, for coaches and players. Me, the best policy is, is kind of is honesty. Uh, my personal my personal approach. It's not for everyone, but I don't keep anything from them. Anything that affects affects the team, I tell them. Worst thing thing for me is I never like to lie lie to a player. I I will never lie to a player. Now sometimes has thing things happen and things don't don't work out, but it's not because I'm lying. And I tell them that that as well. And for me. Um, with with my players, I, I have certain things I say all the time, time to them, you know, and I say, I say to them, like they talk, we talk all, all, all the time. And I say, you know, coming from me, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty blunt, like in terms of when I have to say, say something. So uh, like, they may not li like it, but I'm going to say it anyway. And a lot of times players will tell, how's this going? How's that going? And they tell you a lot. I was doing this. I was, and I, I tell them, stop, you know, stop. Don't tell me, show me. And I want to see it and I'll see it on the court. If what you're saying is true, I'll see it on the court. So don't tell me, just show me. And a lot of time in practice for us is, is, you know, you have to challenge yourself. Like if a player's on the cusp of playing more, or wanting to play more, it's got that, that edge. We look closely at it. I got. We meet with our coaches after every practice, and I ask them, "Who impressed you today? And what what you would you see, see today? What's going on today?" And and ultimately, we're looking for that player that wants to be better. That player is going to give us a little bit in a certain situation, and and usually it's 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 that player. And we say, "Okay, who's who's this player defending? Is this player defending our worst player or our best player?" You know, and that for me is a visible sign of who they are. Like, I know I can trust that player. If I got a player that's consistently going out and challenging themselves against the best player, regardless of whether, whether they get beat, beat or not, for me, that's showing me something. 
Because sometimes I get players who say, oh, I don't want to defend today, I'll watch you. And they just shove it off. And so that, we see that, I mark it down every, every day. Those are the girls that I like to, that I trust. Um, and like all of you, you know, in practice, you know, we go over things, we say things, but they're not always picked up. <laughs> not always. A lot of times they're not picked up. And so sometimes I kind of had, had enough and they'll do the same thing over and over again. And I just tell them, hey, listen, you're playing, you figure it out. And I tell them, figure it out. And then they go out there and they got to figure it out. Like for me, um, you know, I don't really, they, they say we're coaches, but I think we're more teachers. Like for me, I've been in education my whole life. And I just look and try and find ways that kids learn. And so, you know, for me, I, I, I like to say I, I teach more than anything else. But, you know, they call you coach. And, and, and my players don't call me coach. My players just call me rail. And that's just kind of the relationship that we have. Um, and it's, it is that way. I don't take it badly. They don't say it badly. It's just what I've always done. And that's been throughout my whole life. Um, anyway, X's and O's. I'm not going to get into that. You know, X's and O's are a matter of preference. Everybody has their style, what they want to, you know, what they want to get across, how they want to do it. And there are so many, there's no wrong way. There's no, and there's no one good way. You know, what works for me doesn't work for you. What works for you doesn't work for me, whatever. Um, you know, but whatever your philosophy is, there, for me, there are certain things I think you need to do. Like for me, it's always, you know, I break it down as simply as I can. You know, I, I want the kids to learn and to learn it best I can. And so for me, I've got to break it down um, simply, as simply as I can. And again, for me, uh, I teach all the individual skills first. And then I try to meld it or fit it in to what our team is doing. Uh, like on our team, when we do things, I will, everyone is expected to know what we're doing all the time. Uh, this is where I always refer to as a cerebral player. I say cerebral. For me, it's a, like I like a thinking player. For me, the smarter the player is, the better you are. And I always say that, you know, a lot, during a lot of times in a game or throughout the year, a thinking player, a thinking player can outdo an athletic player a lot of times just because you're just because you're thinking out there. So that's the type of individual that I like. I always ask my players, I, you know, like I, I used to ask, I say, what's your great, greatest weapon at, you know, at the beginning of practice or at the beginning of years? Like now they know the answer, but I see, and then they'll tell me, uh, I'm a great dribbler. Or I'm a great shooter. or I rebound well. I did, you know, and it's not, that's not your greatest weapon. Like I always tell them, your greatest weapon is your mind. If you can think out there, you can play. And so at practice for me, we practice actions that fit into what we want to do offensively. We take all the small parts and then I like to put it together. So it's a lot of small parts. So when you get the the two on twos, the three on the three on twos, and and you know we we put them into things that we like what we're doing offensively. So then when I put in the whole concept, I just say, look, here's what we're doing here. Just this, just this. So we break it down and then put it together. For me, it kind of works. And, um, you know, even when I was coaching novice, like I, I started my career at novice, I, I, I coached in the minor systems for well over 20 years from novice on to Bantam. And, and, you know, I always thought like for us and what we were doing, you know, the, the baseline shot was important to us. And so, you know, we competed that baseline shot every day, every day, made different teams compete. Sometimes I brought in stuff like I might bring in four or five chocolate bars. They say, okay, you guys are competing for chocolate bars. It's amazing what they'll do for, you know, for, you know, and they're, they were day old chocolate bars. They got them cheap, but you know, it's amazing what they'll do for that prize. So we did that a lot. Um, during most drills for me, I stop and teach. Now for me, teaching is not long. It's not laborious. It's not like, like what, like I'm doing now. I have one command, I have one thought, one command is very short and it's precise. 
and we go on and it's quick and it's quick and it's quick. And I do that because I know even though I say it, they're going to do it wrong again. And then they're going to do it wrong again. And they're going to keep doing it wrong. They do it wrong many, many, many times. For me, I live with that. Because I know in the end, um, to get better, you've got to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And even when you think you got it, the next day, it's like you've never seen it before. So you've got to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. So for me, it's repetition. Team chemistry. Team chemistry, there are a lot of challenges to this. A lot of challenges. I didn't go out and say, okay, I'm going to create some team chemistry. Just in my little bit of experience, I just, you know, try to put things together where I hope that that happens. So, uh, but there are a lot of challenges and they occur every day. And you, I ask myself, why do they, why do these challenges come up? And the answer is simple. To me, it's because they don't buy in. They, they're not listening to you. They don't understand you. They don't believe you. They just don't believe in what you're doing. So you're always trying to sell your message, which is a lot of times difficult. Sometimes it is. Sometimes all the time it is, you know, it doesn't make but it's difficult. For me to try and get them to buy in, I want them, I want them to buy in and I don't want to force it into them. Uh, like I want them to understand and to make their own decision. Is this right for me? Does it make sense to me? Is it working? Will this make sense? And this is where our individuals are important because this is where we have discussions with the with the player coach and the team coach. And they, you know, sometimes with the team and the coach, sometimes with the player and the player. And I try to make sense of it all. And here is like, so I'm trying to get them to buy in. And I better be pretty good because if I don't make sense, it's it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna go. So I better make sure I know what I'm talking about. We had a turning point this year. And uh, um well uh, like I, I we we had a game i forget where where it was exactly but i wanted to try something new i wanted to try something on the fly and something that we had never done before but i saw something i thought okay this is the way we can stop them and anyway i was trying to get it across to our players i think it was at halftime and i needed them i needed them to buy in and as you can tell a lot of times I fumble with words. So at this particular time, I was trying to get them to buy in and nothing was flowing well. Nothing was, nothing I said really like I was stammering and, you know, I was going around everything and it wasn't really going all that well. And then Taddy, uh, just just when I was like, oh, I said, I'm, this is not going well. She, she stood up and she just said, Rayo, what are you selling us today? And everybody kind of laughed put me at ease. I told them what I wanted and they went out and did it. And we started to roll. We started to roll. It was at that point that I knew I had a very smart team and a very unselfish team. And so that for me is where, is where team chemistry started to work. Just in that one turn of events. Well, there were others, but just in that, in that one. In our individuals, it's a great time to build to build relationships because with me I only go with two players at a time, so it's a great time to build a relationship. And but it's you got to remember it's also a time when players get really frustrated, and you're going to say why because individuals are just trying trying to get better. Yes, they are, but for me, I try and I try to take them outside their comfort zone. This is a time where I kind of I can kind of assert myself as a teacher. I don't really get mad mad at them. For me, it's all business. Like I don't really I don't swear at the girls. And I, you know, like I always say, I've got a daughter that's their age. And uh, you know, I was hired by the priest when I was in Catholic school, when I was a teacher. So they always tell me they want to be competitive, but you better treat our kids well. And I tried to do that. And 
for me, individuals always kind of progressed when the player themselves saw improvement, when it made sense to them. And eventually, when it does, they will perform for you. It takes a lot of time. But I can tell you, as a coach, you got to be relentless. You cannot give in to the day or the hour or the tiredness that you feel whenever, because it hits us all, me especially, because I'm hitting, I'm 60, 61. So it hits me a lot, but I try and never, never let in. And so in teaching, you have to be relentless. You must continue to, they must continue to progress. And I always say, I don't let let up, but they got to progress your way because you're the only one that can see see that, and they got to play in your vision. Um, so that's what we get out of individuals. For me, okay, how do we get them to understand? It's hard. How do we get them to understand and learn? Because they all learn differently. Individuals weren't going all that well, and so I don't know. It was one of those days, and. Uh, Anyway, the kids were practicing and my assistant coaches were taking over some of the initial things that were going on the day or drills or whatever. So I was, we had individuals that day and stuff, but anyway, it wasn't going all, all that well. So I had my putter, I had a golf ball and a, um, a disc and I like golfing. And so I went to practice and I, I started putting at one end of the court. And the girls were doing their drills. I just started to putt, and I just putt a few. And within a few minutes, one of the girls came came over and said, "Ray, what are you doing?" I said, "Well, I thought you're in university. Can't you see what I'm doing?" And the girl said, "Yeah, yeah, I know you're putting. I know you're putting." And so finally, one other one went up. Well, why are you putting, Ray? I said, "Because I like putting." She goes, "Oh, you like putting? Yeah, I, said, I like putting, so I'm putting." And another girl come up and she said, "Well, Ray, you must be a good golfer." I said, well, no, not really. I'm actually not a very good golfer. I said, you're not a very good golfer, but you're playing. Yeah, I said, yeah. Well, then one of the other girls came in and said, well, Rayo, it's all, you know, it's all about the short, short game. It's a short game. You got to work on your short game. Short games there, you can, you know, you can become a better golfer. Then I think it was Keltos. No, it's not the short. It's a drive. If you put the drive in play, you know, you got a better angle to the green, all this stuff. And yeah, I started listening. And you know, one said, you know, you, you got to do this. You can't just, play. you got to do this, got to do that. And then finally, I saw, they're all giving me all this advice, right? I stopped them. I saw, oh, girls, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, you, you're you telling me that I got to get better doing things that I'm not good at, things that I don't like to do. And they looked at me and I put down my putter and went to practice. The next month of individuals were fantastic, were fantastic. Everybody kind of brought in and we went about our way. So sometimes for me, they learn differently. Um, in one of those pra practices as well, I was uh, uh, in one of those individuals, I was with Sam and we were just working on things. Now, you gotta remember, Sam's my, our fir first year player. I'm new to her, she's new, new to me. So, uh, I tread lightly, you know, I, I don't say everything that I want to say because uh, Sam, this was her first real competitive year. She didn't really play a lot the last couple of years, but um, we were very for fortunate together. And uh, so I wanted to tread lightly and we're doing things and things were progressing here, we're going well. I think I made the mistake. I don't know why I said it, but I said, wow, Sam, you stay on this track, you're going to be a good player. And next year, I think we're going to be a terrific team. I know I said to her, well, by next year, you're going to be a, a very good player. And next year, this team's and this, we're going to have a terrific team next year. And she stopped in her tracks and she looked at me and she said, next year, next year, what about this year? Are you kidding me? And then she rolled, she just turned her head. She was so mad and she walked away. And from that point on, she started to roll. Like I, I saw, what a difference, like every practice within that practice, within that individual, she was just getting better and better and better by leaps and bounds. So I didn't do it on purpose, but that was the outcome. Skills. 
for me, it's easy. Just work on the skills, work on what you want to work on, but be relentless in all your teaching. I put up Carissa because her and I have the toughest time. Uh, you know, I'm trying, I think, I think she's, she's much better than she was when she came in and she's going to continue to get real good. And, uh, you know, there's other aspects of the game that I want her to, to excel at. And, and it's, um, uh, she's a tough girl. So, you know, it's tougher at times, but she's kind of buying in, but she, she knows I don't, I don't relent. I don't give in. It's the same thing. It's the same message all the time. So if you're good coaches, I think, or if you want to be coach, uh, you know, if you, if you want to have some impact on, on your players, you'll be relentless. For me, it's these things, dribbling. For me, dribbling is the most important aspect of the game. The best dribblers can get out of bad situations, double teams, bad situations, anything you want. Why? Because they can usually either dribble out of it or find an open player. Why? Because they got, they're comfortable with the ball. So for me, that limits your turnovers. And when you have that aspect of the game, that player can play, play for me. I, I like that kind of player. So that's one of the most important skills that we have. And then the second thing I teach, I teach, teach a lot are the skills that take no great skill in doing, you know, you don't have to be, you don't need a great skill to do these, the, these things. For me, it's defending hands and feet, stick can, defend with flank, lateral movement, always in constant motion, you know, offensively screening, passing, Again, always dribbling. For me, it's movement without the ball. Don't watch the ball. Move, move, move. Learn to track the ball. Learn to see the ball. Your eyes will tell you where it's going to go. Like, learn to track the ball. That's why we do two-on-twos all the time, two-on-two shooting all, all the time. Learn to track the ball. Find out where, where it's going. See where it's going. So those are things, being in constant movement, those are things that don't take any great skill. You can be a good player and just do those, those things. And I teach shooting. Uh, I teach shooting uh, my own pers personal way. I, I learned many years ago and I just kept building on it. And for us, it's been kind of successful. And I do it a lot in individuals and then I correct during practices, but they all know what I'm kind of saying. And it's more, more individuals, it's boring and it's, it's boring and it's repetitive and it's the same thing, but it's, it's, they know it, but it's hard to do it. That's why, you know, in school, you just got to learn it and write it down. But in basketball, not only do you have to learn it, you have to do it physically. So it's more demanding. So if you're a smart player in basketball, you're going to be a smart player in life. You're going to do the right thing. You're going to know, you're going to know, know what to do because you're, you're able to do it both physically and mentally so it's it's tough it's technical it's boring and it's repetitive but it you know for me it starts you know with the feet and then your hands and then you, you know the place the placement of the ball and like everything so for me that's big um here's our overall shoe shooting charts i thought that some of you might want to see what we do for us as an overall team, well, and analytics, everybody's into analytics. I am too, but probably not to the degree of, of some other people, but uh, I do look at it. Um, threes, uh, we weren't bad, bad this year. O overall, as, as a team, we're almost 32%. I think to be a really good team, you got to be between 35 and 40. So we're not quite there, but we weren't bad. The other part that we like, like to look at is layups, like, within three, four or four feet of the basket. Uh, we're 43% there. Now, I don't think that's as good as we could be. That's an easy shot. We should be, I think we should be, you know, between 55 and 60%. And that's an area of the game that we have to work on. For us, part of it's conditioning and, and part of it's just, I don't know, part of it's just trying, trying to get better. Uh, I, I don't think we cite the basket as many times. It's like they're looking at the ball. They don't cite the basket. I think that's a little bit of a problem, and we're going to try and get better at that this year. Um, inside, like the 10 to 15 feet, 
10 to 15, uh, uh, well, 15 feet. We're not bad. We're 33 percent. Now that'll tell you that's that's a lot of our jump shots, mid-range shots, and they'll tell you analytics will tell you it's not good. That's not good. But we shot 33 percent. For me, that's pretty good. For me, we're almost there. So the players feel comfortable doing that and shooting that shot. We take it. You know, um, if we can get two two from there, I'll take it. You know, um, forget forget about getting getting it to where analytics say like that's that's what we do. So we take that shot. At, it is as well um you know so for us it's 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 not a bad bad shot here's uh here's melissa taddy uh she's a pretty good shooter and they guarded her hard this year hard doubles everything she's she saw everything and she saw she shot 33 percent from from the three that's that's pretty good. I think it's a few percentage points down where she can be very very good, but she was guarded well. Now, why they th she is a good three point shooter. She's a very good three three point shooter shooter. But a lot of those threes came under like duress, like hard hard times, like really when it was tough, um, and. You know, there were times where she needed to get the, where she, we needed a score and she was there to do it. Um, and then there was Keltos. Uh, she was 37% from, from the three, very good, 40% in the paint, 40% in the paint and 38% uh, in the mid, mid range. So I didn't care where she shot, shot from. If she had an open shot, she shot it. She just shot it all the time. Whenever she was, she was open. The next one is is Jess Morris. Jess Morris, this is a kind of analytics guys love this. She was like 40% from from the three. And if you can see, like inside the paint, like inside the shooting area, she was like uh 45%. I think that's a little low, but um it wasn't bad. You you can see she only shot 20 times like inside the inside the any pull ups or mid range were only 20 times so and as as you can see she was only two two for 20 so we like to spread her out on the floor um, she was a very good rebounder for us but we like to spread spread her out on the floor um, I want to show you some clips sorry I I you know I forgot in our individuals. I'll show you some of the things. We'll go back to our individuals just a bit, then I'll show you some three three point things. Individuals just a bit to show you some of the things that we work on collectively. And I'll show you with big men because they're in the paint, but we work on this with all our players. So um, hang on, I'll show you that now. So these are just. Um, Okay, these are the first few slides that we work with. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed. I missed the fir first. The first first clips. Sorry, the first clips are just when I went back to um, number seven about um, team chemistry and being unselfish. I should have show, showed you these at, at at the times, but these are clips that show you our unselfishness. Sorry, I'll go back, back, back to the other ones in, in, in a second. So, kind of forgot that. But here's where just two players working together to, to get open. This is another thing where, uh, and Sam and Taddy work well. She's directing her again. And Sam pops. Notice that she's looking for Jess, but everybody runs that way. She's wide open. She takes that. This is when Kristen, that's why I call her a warrior. She just attacks the basket and then she finds the open player and Sam's on the perimeter and she just makes it. Again, they're leaving Sam open. She'll take that all night. If you can see, like most of our shots are open shots. We dive a person, she'll get over, we'll find someone again, she'll look, we'll swing it till we get an open three. Um this is another example. Again, we just move it. She'll attack. She'll find someone. 
same thing. This is one of the best situations. This is, and it was a, it was a great, great clip on ball movement. That one. Now I'm showing you clips only from our last four games. I'm not showing showing you clips from all year. They're only our last four games, and that's because I wanted I wanted you to see us at the end. And this is, you know, this is how unselfish that this team was. Taddy's just finding people all over. Jess Morris on the perimeter. A team that doesn't care who scores as long as we score. Again, Sam is, we like to get it from one side to the other. Ball reversals are big for us. There it, there it is. She makes that one. This is the last one. Kick it out wide open. So those are those are those ones. Um, the next twelve, next twelve are you'll see everything in the paint. And the next twelve clips are just what we do in individuals. When I say rim touches, this is kind of what we do: the euro step, the ball, the ball reversals. Now in these games, like I do have clips where our guards do it, but uh, I worked a lot with our. Uh, with our big people. Now, Eden, there are a few clips in here earlier in the year because Eden was hurt. Um, she was hurt and she was out for five, five weeks and she didn't really, she played a little bit, but not a lot. I think she's going to be a good player. Uh, she just didn't quite come into it uh, right at the end, but. Um, okay. So here's, here's Sam, just a flip. Just a rim touch. We take that. Just a post up, some quick. That's all we work on. Just some quick. I want some quick out of there. You know. Um, these are all things we do in our individuals. Left hand, right hand. She wanted to play this year. Same thing, that's that your old step. And we, we work on that, believe it or not. Again, same thing. Here's Eden. That's Eden. She's, you know, just coming off injury. This is against the Carlton team near the end of the year where she came back. This was a little earlier. Not bad. Same thing. This is coming off a ball screen. Good movement, good eye hands. So that was that. So those, so those were that. Also, in our individuals, we we uh, you know we talked about our shooting percentages. We went through them. Here's just a bunch of threes that we that we. Uh, we took throughout throughout the year as well. Here's just finding people. She's wide open. She's shooting it. You know, these are again. This only lasts four or four games. Ball ball reversal. She's shooting it. If you go under a screen against Taddy, she's going to shoot it. If you're late coming coming off a screen, she'll shoot it. Don't play her, she'll shoot it. She's got range. You can see that most of these shots, almost all of them, they have time, time to shoot it. When they have time, time to shoot it, I think we're a better team. This 
This is Jess, another very, very good shooter. Again, off of all screen. Okay. Um, Okay, football. Um, okay, so how not to be selfish. For us, the girls quickly realize that everybody's in the same boat. They have the same challenges when they're with me. They have the same frustration. Everybody has parts, parts of the game that they have to improve on. We work on those individually every every day, almost every day. They share their frustrations and they quickly realize they're not alone. That's when they become dependent on each other. They also know that if I'm not on them, it means I'm not thinking about them. And that's probably worse than, 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 than kind of, than having expectations. So um, we go from there. Our philosophy is nothing new. We have a we philosophy. And basically, it trans for me and for the players, it translates into this simple thing. The best potential of me is we. And in their struggles, when they know that, they learn to trust one another. And how do I know that? Because I often hear, or my coaches will, or other coaches will tell me, and they hear the kids say, you don't know what Rayo's making me do, do today. How is he making me do, do, do that? How does he expect me to do this? And so when I hear that, it kind of, it, they, and when they hear that, they know they're all in the same boat. I'm expecting them to get out of their comfort zone, to do something that they're not good at, to improve on their current game. Building trust for me is kind of comfort in trying, trying to have fun. Um, after a while, they learn to appreciate the expectations that they that we place on them. Well, once they see improvement, for me, I think they, they buy in. Uh, I use humor a lot of time to motivate them and to get better. In practices, when Jess Morris wasn't practicing well, I used to call her uh, ap athlete of the year, athlete of the month. I said, hey, player of the month, you, you know, because she got selected. It's a big deal at our, our place. When you get, we have many, many sports. And when you're selected the player of the month, it's a big deal. So when she throws a pass away or when she misses a layup or when she does this, I say, hey, play, player of the month doesn't do that. And, and they quickly, they look at you and then they uh, and then they get a little bit perturbed. And then they, they go back and they, for me, they try and get better. They try and get better. They give me a bad look, but I take it and then they go on. Um, Kristen, one of our better defenders, like she was having a, a problem one time on defense and and one she wasn't looking at the ball she wasn't looking at her defender she wasn't doing anything defense was ter terrible and the ball came off the rim she wasn't looking hit her right in the head and so i said see see what happens when you when you don't do this when you don't don't do that from that point on uh i call her head ball when she when she when she doesn't do what she's supposed to do in practice or 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 filling a role that she should be playing she you know I call her head ball and she comes right back into it. With Keltos, it, it was tough. I mean, she worked hard all, all year, but she had a big game against Ryerson. She scored 4 to 42. When we came back, she was kind of still ride, riding a high, but we had to get ready. We had to get into the, the Nationals, right? And she was, you know, she was good, but a few things were going were going, going wrong. And I, I called her 42. I said, hey, 42, you ever think about doing this? You ever see this? Maybe look here. Maybe do that. And she quickly bought in and she got back to what we we're doing. It, it's, it's, for me, it's that key to get back what we do every day. That's why I never get too high, too low. Taddy was a little different. Taddy, the year before, we had to, she, you know, she had the ball all the time and we weren't all that good. But, uh, you know, we played hard and she had to take it a lot of times. So, she got into a lot of what I call car crashes. She would drive the bigs and she would, and she get bounced all over. So I had to figure out this year, keep her out of those situations because, you know, we're one ankle away from not going anywhere. So, um, 
uh, I tried like crazy to keep her out of that ram jam type of play that she was used to or that she did. So, um, you know, whenever she got back back into it, I would call her all-star because she was an OUA all-star. This year she was uh, OUA uh, player of the year. So I say, hey, all-star, you know, if you want to score more, maybe give up the ball, ball, ball a little more. Move the ball, reversal, move, do this, do that. And to her credit, she bought in. She was tremendous. So that's that's what it was for us. I don't uh, I don't ever uh, underestimate this. For us, it's it's all effort. Um, I grew up, you know, playing on the pavement, and we hated to give up the court. And we would, you know, we played East End ball, and that was all hard nosed. We weren't most skilled or talented. And the way I grew up is the way I kind of coach. And and we kind of pride ourselves on never giving up. Um, we came behind most games. Most games we were behind, and we came in from, from behind. So the effort of these, these, these girls was tremendous. We we're down by 19 against Windsor, down by 10 against Western. Cal Calgary, we were down eight. And in Ryerson was one of the only times down down the line that we weren't down. And uh, at halftime, I was trying to figure out what the heck to say. And I'm, you know, like they were in the in the change room waiting for me to come in. And I kind of stepped in and said, uh, just tell them, tell them the truth. I was fumbling. I, I didn't know what, what to say. I said, girls, listen, um, I don't know what to say. And they said, well, why? I mean, the half was going, going well. Well, why? I said, because we've never been up at half. And they kind of laughed. And I said, okay, let's just keep doing, doing what we're doing. Let's move the ball here. Let's defend this way. And we went on. And again, that was another part of our role. We stayed with it. So it was, it was great. But effort, I never underestimate effort. Um, I just have a few effort clips that I'll tell you that have nothing to do with me. Have nothing to do with me other than... Um, other than me witnessing. So the clips you're going to see now, this is my first one is the my most favorite. This is against Cal Calgary. Again, it's only our last four games. So you'll see this. Kristen moves out. Everybody's guarding the perimeter. So they were watching the three. Taddy stayed on the end line like she, like she was supposed to, but she saw that they weren't guarding the rim. So she made a cut. She got this pass, and she makes this unbelievable shot. Just from behind, she makes it. She converts for the three, and we go up to Calgary by one. We end up winning by one, and it was a lot to do with that play. This is uh, uh, just a a good look, but again, no rim protector. Jess Morris, just effort moving without the ball and finding an open spot. She did that well this year. Um, again, finding the open spot. They were guarding on the perimeter. She found the open spot. This is just. Ball goes on, on the ground. I like it. Three players almost on the ground. We get it. We go up. And this play will go to the end. It's not a scoring play, but here we go. She attacks the glass. She misses. But watch this play. She comes right back. Gives us another 14 seconds on, on the clock. That kind of hurts teams. So that's an effort play to me. This is Jess. She wasn't going to be denied. Trust me, we don't practice that. She just made it. Kristen, just tough. Again, just just finding the back door. Again, and that's it. Uh, hang on. So, for me, what is success? I don't know. Like, for me, it's self -evalu evaluation. I look at it every, every year. I go through this. What did the season bring? And for me, it comes down to not only one question, a series, series of questions, but ultimately, we were, were we better at the end of the year than we were at the beginning or middle? And this year, I could say yes. There are very, very few times where I said, no, we weren't. Actually, only once, but um, I think we were better. So it doesn't matter where you start. It's where you finish. So for me, that's successful. Uh, did I develop a relationship with most of my players? Yeah, it's difficult because there's a lot of players out there not all of them could play, so they got a different perspective. But did you meet the needs of most players? And I think I did this year. And for me, always words are better are always better than uh, than fear. 
like I don't like to humiliate them in a in a you know into submission for me it's more the other part I do it with a little bit of humor but that's about it so that's all I have to say I'm going to just leave leave you with this I don't know if we're going to have some questions or not but for me it's stay home stay safe and me especially but we all look forward to a time when we can once again get out there and compete on the court with all our athletes thank you very much for attending uh hi mike before we get to some questions um i just want to say thank you on behalf of everyone listening and ontario basketball for doing this for us uh we'll definitely make sure to to watch your team next season okay. um so before we do everything let me get to some questions so i just selected a couple we did have some of the same um so the first question was back uh, when you were talking about your preseason training um right. the question was do you measure or track the efficiency of the plyometric program and yes we do sorry go on no go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah we do yes yes we do uh we have a scale the queen's one actually i left I left it out there. I don't know. We went to Queens because one of my players was playing there at one time and there was a book at Queens. I, I stole it. I hate to say that, but I stole it. It was there. So I used that for, uh, as my plyometrics guide. And uh, we had different, it was just boxes we had throughout, throughout, throughout the gym and everybody's at a different level, but we track them. And so they're 12 inch jumps for one foot, two foot, all kinds of things. And we tried to get it to a, a spot where we went to 18 inches. So our ply, our ply and plyometrics, we always, and we, we chart it very simply. We had a person's name and where are you on this? And then we had, you know, we had um, uh, with ply and plyometrics go up and down. And we generally tried to get everybody at, I think it was 18 inches, um, you know, and we do a minute, right foot up, left foot down, left foot up, left foot. So for me, it was all these, these things. And then we find crosses on the floor and we time it and we, you know, we do that consistently. So those weren't tracked, but your elevation tracked. And we had some kids that, and, and then how, how we track, track it is one foot jumps. Like we had a, I taped a, a measuring stick to the wall and we had one foot jumps and every week we'd say, okay, what's your vertical? two foot and one foot, what's your vertical? And so for us, that was a measuring stick. Uh, you just put your hand, hand up, there's there's where you're at, you go from there and then you measure the inches. So yeah, we tracked it. But when I was in high school too, we also, we, we, we did a lot of car cardio too. And in September we would track, we would go on a, on the track three times a week and we had um, uh, 12, 12 laps. Everybody had to do 12, 12 laps. And so you came in and, and you did your 12, 12 laps and we timed it. So we did that for six to eight weeks out, out, out of the year. Why I did that was because we had injuries the year before. And so I, I thought, you know, injuries for, for me are because you're out of shape. And so you're not strong enough and you're not, you know, you're not in shape. So um, with us, we did the weight training, training thing. We had a weight training program on a universal, very simple nine nine stations in and out 40 minutes and we tracked that as well like they had their individual things and uh, and so um you know my best players you know they they really took that to heart some of my iffy players didn't but you know it is what it is and then the cardio was there was no way to get around it and we made sure that that part of it was taken care of and you know if you wanted to come out you had to be part of that and if kids came out and they didn't do their running well, it was probably you're not gonna make the team. And so that that was big for us. And I saw, we track our, in terms of games lost, we tracked our injuries and we were like way, way down, way, way down. And so that I so I kept that for the rest of my career in high school. So I hope that answers it. Great. <clears throat> so there are a few other questions, um, but it looks like our timer is gonna run out. So. What I'll do is, Mike, if you're okay with this, I'll put them in a, a doc, an email and send them over to you. And if you want to answer them, uh, I can then circulate them to the group if that works. Yeah, sorry it was so long. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you again for doing this and, and thanks for all co the coaches uh, jumping on board. 
Um, just a reminder for all the coaches listening, we are live again this Thursday with Carleton men's assistant coach, uh, Jamie Campbell. Um, it'll be similar to the same process. So thanks again, Mike, and, and everybody stay safe out there. Thank you. Everybody have a safe day. Thank you.